Looking for the perfect place to chill out on your next vacation? We may have just the spot for you. Each year, China's city of Harbin hosts a multi-week ice festival that not only features some of the most incredible and world record setting ice sculptures you will ever see, but stunning lights, incredible food, ice-themed games, unique snowy theme parks, and the legendary Ice Lantern Festival that is sure to take your breath away. We've got the scoop on everything Harbin has to offer and why it attracts over 10 million people each year. Harbin's Ice Festival didn't always start as, well, an ice festival. The origins of this beautiful and truly unique celebration date all the way back to 1963, when Harbin hosted an ice lantern garden party. True to its name, locals would gather together and carve out lanterns from hollowed out blocks of ice, a tradition that has stuck around to this day, and we'll get into that later. As time went on, this festival grew and grew and grew. Harbin's locals started holding ice activities, which included games, sports, and of course, building ice sculptures. It wasn't until January 5th, 1985, that China's propaganda department of Harbin Municipal Party Committee finally took note of all the excitement of the locals and the massive revenue from tourists flocking from Taiwan, Macau, and Hong Kong. And just like that, a simple lantern garden party became the yearly extravaganza we see today, known as the Harbin Ice Festival, held in Zhaolin Park. We mentioned tourism, so just who is going to this festival? And how much is it making? Check this out, the Harbin Ice Festival has become quite the phenomenon, and in 2018, 18 million visitors zipped up their jackets and tightened up their snowshoes to experience this winter wonderland. Data from the city's tourism bureau shows that in that same year, $4.4 billion in tourism revenue was made for Harbin. Not bad for a two-month festival of ice and snow, huh? So just what's bringing in that kind of money? Well, certainly some of that dough is made from the tickets, which are pretty reasonably priced, believe it or not. Ticket prices vary between the different parks in Harbin, but for a night ticket at their Snow and Ice World, prices are 330 yuan for an adult and 135 yuan for a student. To put that in perspective, in US dollars, that's $51.03 for an adult ticket and $20.88 for a student. Not bad. We see why people are flocking here. So just who in the heck builds this ice town and why is it in Harbin anyways? And what is there to do? Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill out. We got you. We're sure you're going to be just as blown away as we were when we found out all there is to do at this legendary ice festival. Every year, over 10,000 workers are hired to build this incredible attraction. They get the ice from none other than the Songhua River, and by dragging massive ice blocks over to Harbin, they are able to construct a colorful fantasy land. But sculpting ice doesn't come cheap. In fact, it can get pretty pricey pretty quickly. A sculpture the size of a tabletop vase usually costs $45 to construct, while pieces that are around 36 inches tall, think heart sculptures or swans that you see at weddings, will cost you about $300. And an ice block bar or table can go for as much as $1,000. When you hire the most accomplished sculptors, expect to pay around $4,500 for your design. Now, in Harvin's Snow World, one of the parks open during the festival, more than, get this, 2,000 ice sculptures are on display, carved from nearly 240,000 cubic yards of ice from the Songhua River by nearly 1,000 of the world's best ice artists. That puts the total price of these exquisite sculptures at $9 million for the lot of them. And that's just for this one park. At night, they really come to life. Harbin spares no expense when it comes to their sculptures, and they are all dressed up with enchanting light displays. It's a wonder to behold. There's even ice sculpture competitions. To quote Han Zenkun, a world-famous ice sculptor, art has no borders. It's an abstract language. We communicate with our works in this international competition. It means a lot. At the 2007 festival, Harbin even received the Guinness World Record for the largest snow sculpture, a 656 foot long and 115 foot tall landscape. So what else is there to do at this festival besides see some of the best ice art in the world? 
Well, don't you worry. There's a little something for everyone here in Harbin. The festival has swimming, ice hockey, skiing, and snow biking for all those adventurous and athletic souls that venture out here. The city itself has a ton of history as well. Be sure to check out St. Sophia Church, the Confucius Temple, Heilongjiang Province Museum, and the Siberian Tiger Park. If you are a fan of Russian art and culture, you don't want to miss Harbin Volga Manor and Russian Town. Here you will see architecture that seamlessly blends Chinese and Russian influences, and you will get to enjoy some of the best food the city has to offer. Hey, speaking of food, the Harbin Ice Festival is known for its delicious delicacies. On average, expect to pay around 80 yuan per day and just about 32 yuan per person for an average meal. That's a very respectable $12.37 per day and $4.95 per person. Be sure to try the world-famous dumplings, particularly the stuffed with pork, celery pork, nut kernels and corn stuffed with fried beef, and of course, the cabbage pork dumplings. As far as nightlife, Harbin only has one bar that's located around Central Avenue, so your options are pretty limited, but they do have a pretty robust karaoke bar selection. Start warming up those vocal cords now. One hour of karaoke here costs around 50 bucks. Add in a case of beer, which will cost around 50 bucks as well, and one of the bar's exquisite small plates of meat for only $5. And you've got yourself a fantastic night on the town for only $105. Now, at the beginning of the video, we mentioned an Ice Lantern Festival. We think it's high time we tell you all about it and why it's such a magnificent and sought-after attraction. Get this, the Ice Lantern Festival kicks off the entire event. That's right. See, the festival runs for two months, usually from around December 20th to around February 28th of the same year. And this is the event that starts it all. The tradition of sculpting ice lanterns dates all the way back to the Xing Dynasty. That's from the year 1644 to 1911. And during that time, locals would make ice lanterns by pouring water into a bucket and waiting for it to freeze. They would then pull out the bucket-shaped ice and carve a hole in the top which they would then insert a candle. These windproof lanterns were perfect for the icy and windy winters of Harbin, and the tradition stuck. Today, you can see hundreds of beautifully carved lanterns light up the night and kick off the ice festival. It's truly a sight to behold. Getting excited about visiting Harbin? You better be. Just be sure to save up a bit before you go. A night stay at the deluxe Shangri-La Hotel in Harbin is $105 per night and a stay at its competitor, the beautiful Songbai Shangri-La Hotel, is $85 per night. But the real expense is gonna be the flight. A first-class ticket from New York City to Harbin, that's a $15,061 ticket. Oh boy, but you know it's gonna be worth it. Hey, before we go, did you know that the U.S. has an ice festival of its own? The St. Paul Winter Carnival is the biggest ice festival in the States, and it attracts more than 350,000 visitors to Minneapolis and St. Paul every year. Of course, you'll find ice carving and snow sculpture competitions, but get this, there's an ice fishing tournament as well. Get out that hook, line, and sinker, and you just might win. We'll see you next time, right here on The Richest.